you guys enjoyed that destruction montage for the introduction there. This is my airstrike machine, and you can call it in using a flare gun. But before we get into how to build it, let's talk a little bit about how it works. So let's start by blowing up this minecart here, and you see it's at a height of four blocks. Four it's five carpets, that's about four blocks high. You see it creates a hole this big. Now let's try blowing up the same minecart from the maximum height of the map. Here, uh, we'll put our TNT minecart. As you can see, it's only one minecart, just like the other one, just a single minecart. Except we're putting it as high up as we can. So it's dropped from, dropping from like 254, I think. And we'll see the different size of the explosion. There's all our carpet. And look at that ex different explosion size. Obviously, it's much larger if you drop it from height. So that's why we set it up like an airstrike rather than just setting it up like a bomb. So in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to build that airstrike as well as the flare that calls it in. So the first thing we'll need to do is get up to the maximum height of the map. Uh, so we'll do that by using carpets. And you use carpets just because if you break the bottom one then they all break instantaneously. So keep fast forward through this here. So once you get up to maximum height, you want to break a few of the carpets, uh, just one or two, and then you want to put a piece of obsidian or any other, you can use bedrock, I use obsidian just because it's darker and you won't see it against the night sky, and put a torch on top of it with pistons surrounding the torch. So when the torch turns off, the pistons will turn off as well. Or if you prefer, what we'll probably do later is we'll connect them with a line of redstone just so you can see how it works, I'm putting the pistons directly next to it. Then beneath that, put a piece of wool with another torch. Actually, that's what we're going to do this a little differently. So, put wool surrounding that piece of obsidian that has the torch on it. So we're going to put a line of redstone going up to turn that torch off. And we need to put that redstone going over the wool. And the reason we do that is because we want to actually burn this wool from the ground, and that's how the flare works. It burns up the wool and breaks the redstone, and the redstone, when it's broken, it no longer disables the torch, and then all the pistons push. So uh, you'll see how, that, if that doesn't make sense, you'll see it in the video. But basically what we want to do is create a big upside-down dome shape, just kind of to catch fire. Or if you prefer, you can just make a disc, but we want to make some kind of shape out of wool that will catch the fire charges that we'll be shooting later as flares from the ground to call in this airstrike. So once you have enough wool down, um, the, lo the more wool you have, the better chance you have of getting the airstrike on the first try, but the bigger it is, the easier it is to spot, and the larger, like the further apart your explosions will be when you actually call in the airstrike. So anyway, when you get it to whatever size you feel is right, Put down a torch just like this, and then you want to make the most long, weird, and convoluted path of redstone that you can. Because you want this to be very easily breakable when any of this wool burns. So don't make it like lap back on itself or anything. 
You want it to just be one single line of redstone, but you want it to be as long as possible. So no matter where you, that fire charge hits from your quote-unquote flare gun, it will be more likely to burn some of this redstone, and that will uh, activate your airstrike. And you can use repeaters, because those will fall off the wool just the same when it burns. So there we go. See, those are withdrawn, and we have this whole line of redstone. And this covers most of our wool, so if almost any of this breaks, you'll see it pushes those uh, it pushes those pistons out. So the next thing we have to do is set up our explosive payload. And we need to do the fun part, basically. So to do that, we'll put a layer of obsidian. We'll break these pistons, because like I said, that was just to show you how this works. We'll put a layer of obsidian completely covering where the wool is. So just uh, exactly the same shape as the wool. I'll fast forward through it here. And I'll need to make some kind of weird path to avoid this redstone, but I'll worry about that last. So once you have it reaching out, at least to the outer corners here, like it is here, one second. So you see it reaches out to the four corners of the wool circle. You want to run some redstone at least out to those corners. I need to fix that one over here. It's not going to work because I'm right at the top of the map limit, but I'll do, that. do these other ones first. Um, so run redstone to the en edges of these, and we're going to have pistons at the very edges. Just like this. And the reason we do that is, the reason we put those at the edge is so when it pushes them out, our, pis our uh, TNT minecarts don't land below on the wool and blow the wool up. So we don't want to blow our airstrike machine up. We want to blow up the ground beneath it. So at least set up one piston facing in each direction, uh, north, south, east, west. And if you'd like, you can also set up more pistons. It's totally up to you. In, for this video, I'm only going to be setting up four, but you can set up as many as you want using the same, uh, same sort of method. You just want them all to be connected to that same torch in the center. So this should work, hopefully. If not, we'll still have plenty of explosives falling. So you see, oh, no, that doesn't work. I don't know how to fix this. I think. To power a block next to it. Okay, there we go. So now that those are all working, we need to set up our explosive payload. So I'll fix that so those all retract. And we'll be using the trick with the curved track. So what you do is you place a curved track curved minecart track, or a rail, I mean, like this. And then you put the minecarts, the TNT minecarts in this case, on the outer rail, of the, on the outer edge of the curve. And you see that lets you place multiple minecarts on a single track. If you're on PC, this might not work on every update, but there will be some method that lets you put multiple minecarts on a single track, so you can use any trick as long as it lets you do that. And, uh, okay, so we're, I'm going to keep doing this until it tells me the maximum number of minecarts has been reached. Again, if you're on PC, that might be some ridiculously high number, so you might just want to stop sometime before then. So through the magic of editing, you see I now have the maximum number of minecarts, and I have a roughly equal number in front of each one of these. So we're going to go down and we're going to break this carpet. And the reason we use carpet is so you can see exactly where the center of your airstrike machine is. And that's where you're going to put a dispenser facing upward, and that dispenser is going to shoot your flares. So there you go. And you see all that carpet breaks right away, and so you don't have to worry about that. So now we're going to set this up to launch uh, fire charges directly upward. And let's see. You could do it like this. This is how I usually do it. Wrong type of wood. Got to make this house look nice before we blow it up. So you could do it like this. This is usually how I would do it. Just make this quickly repeating signal here. But it's actually been going too fast for me. It goes so fast it doesn't let them out in time. So I'm going to be using a different... Uh, I'm going to be using the design that shorts out the redstone. To that For some reason that shoots a little slower and that works when this one is going too fast. See, even if I try to slow it down with a repeater, for some reason it still just goes too fast. 
but that'll probably work for you. The design I just showed, this design right here, this is the easiest one. But if it doesn't work for you, it, you know. Anyway, to make the other design, put a torch on a block with a block above the torch, and then a redstone next to that block. And you'll see that goes a little slower, then I'll be just the right speed to let us shoot off some flares. So once you have that all set up, uh, go ahead and fill your dispenser with fire charges. There you go, you see it's right up, the uh, airstrike machine is right above our dispenser. So I'm going to save before I call this in, just in case anything goes wrong. Now this machine's one downfall is that it, it's not very accurate, the flare gun. That's just due to the nature of fire charges, they don't shoot in a very straight line at all. So you can get lucky and you can hit it three times on the first shot, or you can do it like what I just did here and miss every single shot, even though it's in the dead center. So that's there's nothing to do about that. You could make a slime block, uh, sort of missile machine type thing, to go up and activate it, but that's much slower. You're better off just using this flare gun and shooting, you know, being patient and shooting it a few times. And if it's nighttime, you can see much more clearly. You see that single flame burning up there? That's all we need. Any second, it'll be dropping the payload to blow this little house up. There it is. And you can see very quickly it vaporizes this whole house. There's explosions everywhere. And this is especially nice for console edition, where there's a limitation on how many PNT you can use. But for some reason, that limit doesn't seem to apply to PNT minecarts. But obviously, even on PC Edition, who doesn't love blowing stuff up? If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday, please subscribe. I also do mini build Mondays. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you can use this to defeat all of your enemies.